So, list for me all the things that you found wrong or all the objective tests that you found wrong. Uh, ankle, ankle dorsiflexion. Yeah? That was stiff. What else? Hip internal rotation. Hip bilateral. Internal rotation, strength. Stiffness, strength, oh, or stiffness, stiffness. stiffness, or range, range, sorry, range of motion. Yeah. Okay, so that was down. Yep. What else? Single leg glute bridge and single leg heel raise. Single leg. Uh, sorry, what was it? Glute bridge and glute heel bridge. raise. Single leg glute bridge. On which side? Both sides. Both, both sides. Okay, and the other one? Uh, single leg heel raise. Single leg, heel, heel, raise. Anything else? Uh, um, hip abduction muscle strains. Hip abduction muscle strength. That gives us our major, uh, major, say, problem list. And now what we're trying to decipher is which one to go with first. And this is the way to do it. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have ankle dorsiflexion, hip internal rotation range, range of motion. We have single leg glute uh, bridge we have one two three one two three four five six uh, what have I got left uh, single leg heel raise Hip abduction muscle strength, and we have single leg squat. Key here is we're starting at ankle dorsiflexion. Does ankle dorsiflexion, what's that stiffness, right? Yes. I'll just write that down stiffness, so we have all the terminology here for us. Does ankle dorsiflexion stiffness affect hip internal rotation or does hip internal rotation range of motion affect ankle dorsiflexion? And it doesn't matter if you don't get the answer right uh, at this stage. We're just trying to see which drives which. So does this affect this or does this affect that? And this comes down to understanding parts of the subjective as well. Three clinicians. Which way? This way? Or that way? This way? Okay. Does ankle dorsiflexion stiffness affect the single glute bridge? Or does the single glute bridge affect ankle dorsiflexion? The dorsiflexion affects the glute bridge. This way? Okay. Does ankle dorsiflexion stiffness affect single heel raise? Or does a single leg heel raise affect ankle dorsiflexion? That would affect it, wouldn't it? Because if that's stiff, it does affect the action. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, does ankle dorsiflexion stiffness affect hip abduction muscle strength? Or does the hip abduction muscle strength affect ankle dorsiflexion? I don't think they affect each other. It might not. But if you had a gun to your head and you had a choice to make, where could it go? Once again, you never can get this answer right or wrong. Or you can never get the answer wrong. You can make a choice. I feel like 
it's an ion called dorsiflexion refracting or head abduction. Go this way. Yeah. Okay. Does ankle dorsiflexion stiffness affect the single leg squat, or the single leg squat affect ankle dorsiflexion stiffness? Ankle squat. This way, right? Okay. Now we go to the next one. Hip internal ro uh, hip internal uh, rotation range of motion affects the single leg glute bridge, or does the single leg glute bridge affect hip internal range of motion, uh, internal rotation range of motion? This way? Yeah. Does hip internal rotation range of motion affect the single leg heel raise? Or this single leg heel raise affect the hip? What do you guys think? It's the hip affecting the load. That one? Yeah. Okay. Hip internal range of motion affects hip abduction muscle strength or hip abduction muscle strength affect Hip range of motion. Hip will, will be internal rotation of fatty abduction. Uh, this way? Yes. Yes. Then this one, hip internal uh, rotation range of motion affecting the single leg squat or single leg squat affecting this? Uh, it will be the hip affecting single leg squat. This way. Now we have the single leg glute bridge affecting the single leg heel raise or the heel raise affecting the glute bridge see how we're testing it out as well um, <laughs> um i feel like i feel like the single leg heel raise could be affecting the single leg bridge yep because uh, only because single leg heel raise is a single joint uh, movement, and then the limitation to that could contribute to the glute, uh, like multiple joint movement, sorry, compound exercise, like single. And single. this is where we think of the athlete as well, and the movement patterns that you guys have assessed, yeah. whether the movement patterns go this way or the movement patterns go that way. Mm -hmm. What would you say? What would you like to do? Could be wrong, but I think single leg heel raise is contributing to glute bridge. This one? Yeah. Okay. Single leg glute bridge to hip abduction muscle strength or hip abduction muscle strength to single leg glute bridge? Muscle strength to glute bridge. Agree. This one. Yeah. That one? Yeah. Single leg glute bridge to single leg squat or single leg squat to single leg glute bridge? Bridge to squat. Uh, this way. Then we have this. Single leg heel raise to hip abduction muscle strength or hip abduction muscle strength causing single leg heel raise. It's sim similar to this one, isn't it? Yeah. That you had. What would you like to choose? This way? Go with the pattern as what you did before. <clears throat> and then we have a single leg heel raise to single leg squat or single leg squat to single leg heel raise. Heel raise to squat. This way? And then the final one, hip abduction muscle strength, hip abduction muscle strength to single leg squat or single leg squat to hip abduction muscle strength. This way. Okay, <clears throat> now we add up the arrows that are leaving ankle dorsiflexion stiffness. One, two, three, four. Have I missed out on anything? Four. How many leaving hip internal rotation range of motion? Five. One, two, three, four, five. How many leaving single leg glute bridge? Nine. One. One. How many leaving single leg heel raise? One, two. How many leaving hip abduction muscle strength? Two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, happy with that? 
How many leaving single leg squat? What does that mean? We have nothing driving. Single leg squat doesn't drive anything. Okay. Which one drives the most? Okay. So we have hip internal rotation, number one. What's next? Ankle dorsiflexion. Where's that? Oh, number two. That's, we haven't got any more. Yep. That's number two. What else? Uh, number three, would that be? Hip abduction. Muscle strength. Hip abduction muscle strength is number three. Number four? Number four, that's single leg heel raise. Single leg heel raise. Four. Five? It will be single leg foot bridge. And number six? So what have we created here? Prioritize list. list. Now, we've made the priority, right? We've created the priority list. Let's relate it back to our athlete. In our findings before, we did talk about hip internal rotation and you talked about joint stiffness. That has now come up to the top of the list. We've worked our way through it, but that has come up to the top of the list. Ankle dorsiflexion was up there as well, or you talked about it. So that's come up in this list as well. Number three, hip abduction muscle strength. That's number three. Number four, single leg heel raise. Number five, single leg glute bridge. And single leg squat. Which one would you target first? That's where you target first. How does that help the athlete that you've looked at his objective measures, measured it all up, come up with this plan and then showcased to your athlete that this is where we start. How do you think it'll make him feel? Because the, he's on the uh, path to get better. Yeah. yeah. How does that make you feel? Oh, we feel good. We have a, a clear picture of what you treatment. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Some of these tests that you've come up with are also functional tests. So if you treat hip internal rotation range of motion, what should improve? Number three. Number this one? Yeah. Uh, actually anything below the list yeah. should improve, right? Because that's what drives everything else. Now, let's play devil's advocate. Say that doesn't improve anything. What do you do then? You go to the next one. If that doesn't improve anything, what do you do? Go to the next one. But you're working that out scientifically. All right. This um, system is called the Hoshin diagram. Hoshin diagram. And the Hoshin diagram uh, was primarily used in business in... Um, it's either... Japanese or Korean companies. So um, that's where I learned it from, but I brought it and uh, utilized it in uh, sports medicine okay? and in the clinical reasoning. So another reason why I like this a lot is when you're talking to your athlete and you're working this out, it's all done with diagrams or you know, you're writing and you're figuring it out yourself uh, with your athlete. And they really are part of that process with the clinical reasoning. So if I'm stuck with anything, this is the process I use to get that uh, get that working. Happy? Well, that, was, that was so good. Yeah. Uh -huh. Good.